Okay, welcome back to the Survivalist 2008 channel. And today we're at the workbench. And I want to kind of re-solder this connection on this portable antenna. This little horseshoe connector, I'm not happy with the uh, solder connection. So, uh, first thing we want to do is to go ahead and try to get this clamp down. I have a vise, but I don't have it out here. So we're going to see if we can make that work to hold it tight. It just needs to kind of not move around. And if we get it just to not move around, we'll be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to get it at the angle. There's a good, there we go. Now as you can see, I usually solder on either a piece of tin foil or a plate. A plate is a good uh, solid and it's not likely to cause a fire. Now, as you can see, I've got my soldering station here. I've already got uh, my uh, little sponge I've moistened. I'll show you why in a minute. I've already turned this on. I'm not exactly sure how hot it is at this point, uh, but I believe we're going to get ready to find out. And uh, I'm going to apply a little solder to the end to see if this is hot yet, and it is hot. Now, this is the only time you'll see me applying solder to the end of the soldering tip because you need to dress the soldering tip and clean it off, any oxidiza oxidization, clean it off good before you start your work. You want to have a good uh, a good shiny connection on the end of your uh, soldering tip and that's important because you want to make sure that it is uh, cleaned off good and makes better heat uh, transfer and I use a little brush brush it off and then I might dip it over here on that uh, sponge a little now, it's getting ready, and at this point in time, all I really want to do is re-tack the solder a little bit. Reheat the solder, apply a little more solder, and let it flow, and you want it to be a very bright, shiny connection. If it's dull, looks like it's got minute cracks in it that's not good. You'll want to heat up the work. Apply heat to the work, not to the solder. This is already soldered, but this is what I mean by you don't put solder on the end of the soldering tip and then apply it. You want to get this good and hot and then work in because that wire and everything is going to get hot and it'll start flowing right down where you want it. See how it's flowing? And it's flowing right down in there where I want it. And I'll keep the heat on it and then take it off just like that. Clean off my tip. Put my soldering iron back. Let it cool just a little bit. Okay, now of course this work can get hot, so you have to be careful. It's a very small wire, and it's not hot, and it's got a nice little clump of solder down at the end, and it's not uh, a cold solder, although it looks a little bit, there is some shiny parts to it, but it looks pretty good right there. I think that's a solid connection. I like it because the back is full of solder. I think that's going to be fine. Now, when you're working with electronic parts and connections, you'll want to use a solder that has a rosin core in the center. Uh, this is rosin core center, uh, and that helps the um, that helps the heat transfer, and it also helps. Uh, for the uh, solder to adhere to, uh, to uh, melt 
quicker and make better adhesive quicker adhesiveness to the work that you're doing. So you you when you need to have a uh, rosin core solder, and this is a lead-free solder, and uh, it's not a real tiny diameter, but it did the trick. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a connection for the uh, bug out antenna and uh, I had a video on that that I'm working on and I believe that's going to be alright. I'm going to check the other one a little later too. Uh, I think that's sufficient. Not perfect but uh, it looks like it's good enough for me. Thanks a lot for watching.